Greetings, and I want to say greetings from Canada, those of you who are watching on the other side of the world. Colwyn and I at supper time were just sitting there amazed how, how basically within a day you can be speaking and teaching over in one part of the world where it's like 35 to 40 Celsius and hot and you've got air conditioning on and everything else. And then within 24 to 48 hours, you're on the other side of the world and now you're eating mashed potatoes and corn and things that are not easily to get on that side of the world. So your diet is changing, your sleeping is changing. I want to let you know that uh, this morning I slept in. I slept in to 2 o'clock a.m. And after that, I couldn't sleep no more. So I got up at 2 o'clock and I've been up since then. I'm trying desperately to change my internal clock from a.m. to p.m. and p.m. to a.m. and all those things. But we're just so glad to be with you. And today is the day that the Lord has made. And we're continuing on with our discipleship empowerment word. This is the second part when it comes to the word bold. Yesterday we were talking about how important it is to be bold. And we were looking at through the scriptures. How the scriptures seem to always connect the word with bold with the word uh, speak or action and so we're doing that today for those of you who are on the other side of the world all our friends over there god bless you we're still praying for you and we're trusting that you will continue to be bold in your countries where there is not a lot of opportunities and and some of you may not know in some of the countries like myanmar there's still no church services very rarely you can get together. Thailand is a little bit more open in the north, but not much. Other countries outside of those countries, there's not a lot happening. But God is still working, and people are still being bold in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you for joining us. And uh, again, we haven't quite sorted out what time we're going to come to everybody each day, but Lord willing, we're going to figure it out. And uh, so you're just going to have to Kind of keep connected and hopefully when it comes on, you're there. And if not, you can watch it somewhere along the line. So thank you for enjoy joining us. And again, our discipleship empowerment tip or word today is the word bold. Yesterday we said to about to be bold. Today our title is Bold to Boldness. Some people may say, well, I'm already bold. Well, I'm going to say to you, the scriptures will tell you to go and get even more bold or to have boldness in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think the only way we can have boldness is through the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't think that disciples up until the book of Acts chapter 1 and 2 had much boldness. We notice that Peter, he takes off and hides during the time of persecution with Christ. The other disciples flee, fled and then the other disciples, they went to their homes and, and scurried off to different places. But then when they gathered together in the upper room, and God touched him with the power of the Holy Spirit, it also shows very quickly that boldness came upon them. Because we see Peter who had taken off and run, and Jesus had to restore, restore him at the seaside and tell him, you know, Peter, keep loving my sheep, keep working, keep serving. And, you know, Peter is probably shaking his head, you know, it's easier to be a fisherman than it is to be a fisher of men. And no, oh, but then the Holy Spirit comes upon him and all the people in the upper room and God begins to powerfully move upon the people with boldness. And can you imagine Peter standing up? You know, people are already rumoring and talking and saying, you know, these people are drunk. These people, you know, are doing this and doing that. They don't know what they're talking about. And then Peter said, you know, Come on, men and women, you got to understand it's only like 8 o'clock in the morning. We're not going to be all drunk at that time in the morning. But what we're drunk with is the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And this is a fulfillment of what Joel said would happen in those last days. And I believe we're in the last days. And I think what we're going to see is a whole lot more boldness. And if we don't, we're in trouble. Because the church needs to get bold. You know, be bold. Be bold, for the Lord thy God is with thee. And that's what we need to do is continue to be bold and ask the Lord to be with us because we're going to need every disciple to stand up and be counted for our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a time to hide in the closet. This is not a time to hide behind a mask. This is the time to be able to get out and speak. 
Yeah, I know it's important to wear a mask, but I'm talking about in the spirit realm. You know, sometimes we're hiding behind a veil when we need to take the veil off and let everyone see the glory of the Lord in our lives. Amen. And so we need to be a lot more bolder. And so as we look on into the scriptures tonight and get the testimonies from Paul and others, we're going to see how important boldness was. And it came because of the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And again, I can't emphasize it any more than that. I believe boldness is directly connected to the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The more closer you draw to Jesus Christ and the more fuller you get of his Holy Spirit in you, the greater the boldness will be. The more you get into the word, the word will get into you. The more you get into Jesus, the more Jesus gets into you. The more you get into the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the more the anointing of the Holy Spirit will flow through you. Amen. And that's what we need to talk about today. And out of that, The fruit from that, the fruit from the presence of being with God is boldness. You know, I found when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior down in Detroit, Michigan, when I came to invite Christ into my heart and found out that you needed to give your life to Christ. And then I found out a few months later, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, this meek and kind of quiet and, you know, nonchalant guy all of a sudden became known as Jimmer's Evangelist, where I walked up and down the streets with boldness, telling people they needed to get saved, they needed to receive Jesus Christ. You know why I did that? One reason is because when I went down the States, I heard about Jesus Christ. And then when I came back to my city of St. Thomas, I found out, at least I thought, well, there must not be any Christians here, because if there was Christians here, somebody would have told me about Jesus Christ. So here, all those 17 years, no one ever really spoke to me about Christ. Oh, I knew about religion, and I knew about all, somewhat about all the different denominations. But no one really walked up to me and said, you know what you need, Jim, more than anything else? And I would say, well, what's that? You need Jesus Christ. And it wasn't until I was down in the state. And then when I went back down in the States the second time to meet my friends that helped me come to find Jesus Christ, they said, you know what you need, Jim? I said, what? You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I came back and boy, oh boy, you know, I was up and down the streets every day as Jimmer's the Evangelist. I had my track bag and I was telling people, you need to get saved for the return of the Lord is soon. And people thought, you know, this druggy and drunk had lost his mind. But no, I was experiencing what Peter had experienced. He experienced the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And now he was going to stand up in front of 3,000 people and speak the goodness and grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, in many ways, you can't shut me up. People say, well, you know, Jim, you're here always talking about Christ. I don't know if there's much more else to talk about other than Christ. Amen. We need to talk about Jesus Christ because there's a lot of people like me out there that when they hear the name of Jesus Christ and understand what they're to do, then they will receive him. And then when they understand more that there's power and authority from Christ, then they open up their heart to say, give it, give me all Lord, give me all. And why? So that they can go out in boldness and in power and anointing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's why we're talking about it. And so when Paul begins, and we used this verse last night in Romans chapter 15, verse 15 is where we ended. Now we're going to start. He says, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. You know, Paul says, I've talked a lot to you, you know, and sometimes, you know, speech is pretty good. But if you really want to make it clear, sometimes you just need to write it down. And he wrote it down and he was telling them, you think I was bold in my presence before you. Wait till you read this letter because I'm going to be, it's full of boldness. So moving from being bold to boldness. And again, this idea of boldness is to have confidence, to be courageous, valiant, and brave. That's what God is asking us to do, to move beyond our ability and strength and into his ability and strength. I praise God for each one of you. And that's what Paul was saying. You know, he thanked God for each one of them. And he thanked God for their boldness. He thanked God for what they were doing in their lives. And I thank God for you, each one of you. But I know God wants to take you to a higher level of boldness. 
He just doesn't want you to be kind of, well, I've got a little bit of bold. I'm a little bit bold and I will just stay here. I don't want to rock the boat too much. I don't want to cause too much trouble. You know, I believe if the harvest is ripe right now and this is a great time to get on the combine and go out with boldness and bring in the harvest for Jesus Christ. We're seeing amazing things. You know, that was why it was so hard to leave the other side of the world and come back. Because the harvest was ripening and ripening and ripening and people are getting saved. And, and you know, we're trying to help them in discipleship training and equipping. And, and then, you know, the Lord said, no, and now you need to turn it over even more to the people. And I've been watching how God is using people are coming to the place that I never thought would be bold are now being boldness. <laughs> I've seen emails every day coming and we did this, we did that. Is, is that okay, Pastor Jim? As we did went forward on this and we wrote this and we told our friends about this. Is that okay? And I just keep saying, go for it. Go for it. Take the zeal of the Lord and go for it. And they are. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 21, Paul again reminds the Corinthian church and he says to them, to our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishness. I am bold also. You know, sometime Paul was saying he needed to be careful that he didn't want to boast too much. He didn't want to say what God was doing. But you know, he also wanted to let them know that it was a time that even in his weakness, he was being bold. But now he was, even in the foolishness of his speech, he was going to continue to be bold, even though that sometimes it's not the proper English or the proper grammar, or you didn't use the proper illustration, or, you know, you're going to even offend people sitting there. That's fine. You know, that is okay. Just go forward in the boldness and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And if you fall down, get up again. And that's what God gives us the strength to do. Amen. Well, then as we continue on, we go over into Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. And again, as we move along towards the end of the Old Testament, this word bold and boldness gets even more powerful. You know, I hope by the end of tonight, some of you are going to get on the phone and call a friend and say, you know, we listened to a message about bold and being bold and boldness tonight. And I want to I wanna talk to you on the phone. Can I be a little bit more bold and just tell you who Jesus Christ is in my heart and why you need him as Lord and Savior? Because we don't want them to miss out on eternal salvation. We want them to have the fullness of God's blessing. And that's why how beautiful are the feet of them who go out and bring good news. And then they're going out. They're going out with boldness, not in their strength and ability, but in God's strength and ability. So he says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Paul was telling, you know, things at first were a mystery. Things in the Old Testament we couldn't understand how God was working it out. But now God is giving understanding. He's giving wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And because of that, we're able to go out and speak more boldly. I'm telling you that we are in the last days and God is ripening the harvest up to be brought in. But we are going to need to go out and be more bold. We need to go out on the highways and byways. We need to go out to where the harvest is ripe and bring it in. Jesus said, the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. You know, there is major things going on, and let's join in with boldness, not worried about what the world can do to us or what man may even try to do to us, but knowing that we're walking hand in hand with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why he said in Ephesians, he tells the Ephesian church, in whom we have boldness, who do we have boldness is? Christ Jesus. We have boldness. He had boldness because he was willing to die and to suffer, you know, a cruel death, an unjust death. But because of his boldness, we can experience mercy, grace, and salvation. And now we too must also enter into that place of boldness where Christ, because of his boldness, now gives us access to what? More boldness. You know, he's saying, I don't can't do that. I don't I don't, I don't have the gift of speaking. I don't have the gift. You know, maybe it's time to stop making excuses and just go to the throne room, go into the Holy of Holies, ask God to fill you up, 
And God says in his word, when you go out and even when you don't know what to speak, he says, I will put the words in your mouth. I will put them there. Don't worry about it. I will give it to you. Just go out and be bold. Be bold for the Lord thy God is with you. Amen. While in Philippians 1.14, he says to the Philippian church and most other brethren in whom the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So our boldness can also be contagious and cause others to be bold. And here the Philippian church got bold, and in a greater way, more boldness. How? Because of Paul being in jail. Because of Paul going to, to jail and he couldn't get out and do things, so he just wrote letters and he kept encouraging those people who were coming to see him. But not only that, the Philippian church now became, they became more bold because of Paul's boldness. You know, Paul would have a choice at any time to pay a bribe and he could be let go. He would have a choice at any time to denounce Jesus Christ and they would let him go. But he said, no, I'm not going to pay those bribes. I'm not going to denounce Jesus Christ. I am going to stand strong. And as I stand strong in the Lord, I am going to proclaim his death and resurrection. And that there is grace for all and mercy for all who will receive him. Amen. And so that's what he's saying to them. He says, according to the earnest expectation and hope that is in nothing, I shall not I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. You know, and I think that's what God is doing. Whether by life or by death, he's going to magnify. What does the word magnify is? He's going to bring it into focus. He's going to make it clear, you know. Sometimes as you get older, your eyes aren't very good. And that's why you got to have these things. Why you got to have these? To help magnify things. And sometimes you got to use a magnifying glass so you can see the fine print and see what's going on. God wants to be magnified and he wants to magnify himself. Why? So that we would have greater boldness in him. Again, I think that there's a lack of boldness in the church of Jesus Christ because there's a lack of of understanding of the word. There is a lack of prayer. There is a lack of studying. There is a lack of teaching. I mean, I could go on and say, well, what makes you so perfect? No, nothing makes me more perfect, but only thing reason I'm speaking it out because I find when I read the word of God and I spend more time in prayer, there seems to be a greater boldness and a greater anointing that comes along with that. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And that's why the enemy wants to separate us out. That's why the enemy wants to keep us away from the word. He wants to keep us away from the from prayer. He wants to keep us away from putting on the full armor of God. He wants to keep us away from being filled with the Holy Spirit so that we don't become radical. It's time to become radical. It's time to say, count me in, Lord Jesus. Here am I. Use me. Well, then again, over in... And, uh, as he said in verse 14, And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by, by Paul's chains, are much more bold to speak the word with fear. And then according to my earnest expectations and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether in life or death. Let that be our prayer, that Christ be magnified in our body. And I think when Christ is magnified in us, both body, soul, our mind, and our thinking, and our spirit, we will become more bold. We will become more bold. That's the fruit of a relationship. You know, when you're in love with somebody, you can't stop talking about them. Amen. And that's the way it has been, continues to be, and I pray always will be in my life that I will have the boldness of the Holy Spirit Right up until the end, whatever the world tries to throw at me, whatever Satan tries to do, I will be able to say, yes, I can stand for our Lord Jesus Christ because his boldness is what runs through my veins. It's his word, his name, his, his spirit is all there. Well, in 1 Thessalonians, he goes on and he tells the Thessalonians church, Paul said, but even after we had suffered before and we were spitefully treated at Philippi, so again, he just talked to the Philippians, and now he's saying, what happened there? And then he goes on, instead of all that, that spiteful how we were treated and put in jail and, 
and persecuted, as you know, we were bold in God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. So here, and I think that's what's happening today, in much conflict and much challenges that are going on, what is happening is moving the lukewarm either to get cold or to get hot. And when they start to get hot, they get moved with more boldness. See, because of the persecution and suffering, you know, the sleeping giant that was sleeping is now waking up. And I pray that for the church, that as we've been a sleeping giant and the harvest has been ripening around us, it's time now to wake up and put on the garment of boldness for our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul tells again to the Timothy, he says, Timothy, I want to talk to you about it. If you're going to be a leader in the church, you got to lead with boldness. You know, we got to start getting our elders and deacons and pastors and leaders and that going out and leading with boldness, leading by example. When you lead by example, the only way to do that is to be bold and to be strong for the Lord thy God is with thee. They people need to see that the Lord your God is with you. That's what they need to see. That's what testifies that there's something different about you since you've invited Jesus Christ into your heart. You're beginning to do things that you would normally have not done. You've been able to take stand where you would normally not take a stand. And how are you being able to do that? Because of the boldness of the Holy Spirit that has filled us. So again, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, he says, To Timothy, for those who have served well as deacons obtained for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So those who have served well, those who've got in the well and into, into the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have invited them in their heart, those who are leadership in the church, you know what? Because of their good standing, because of their walk of righteousness in our Lord Jesus Christ and their understanding of the grace, mercy, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of that, they have been able to go forward with great boldness of faith. Great boldness of faith. The idea of boldness is modifying the word faith. They just didn't just have basic faith. Well, I have faith, you know, and I'm hoping that today when if the Lord comes back, he'll take me. And I'm hoping that if I would die tomorrow, that I'd be found worthy somehow to get into the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. That's not what it's all about. What it's all about is to have great faith. And when you have great faith, you're going to have great boldness for our Lord Jesus Christ. Am I wearing out that word yet? Well, I'm hoping that tonight when you go to bed, you're going to be thinking about this word boldness and saying, Lord, I want more boldness. I want more boldness no matter. And you know what? I've seen people, even when they've been physically sick or physically down and out, physically going through difficult times. I saw that in Irene. I saw that the greater that the valley was, the greater the boldness she had in our Lord Jesus Christ. I saw that in Colwyn and I. The greater the challenges that we face as we travel around, the greater the boldness, the greater the faith that we believed that God was going to look after and take care of us, that we could, we could understand that He never changes. He is always there. Hebrews 4, 16, He says to us, and this is a, a wonderful passage, verses 14 to 16, we, should, we need to take a moment just to read it all here. It says, seeing then when we have a great high priest, we have a great high priest. Do you have a great high priest? Because when you have a great high priest, this is what's going to happen. We have a great high priest who passed through the heavens. He passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, and let us hold fast to our confidence. Let us hold fast that Jesus Christ passed through the heavens, came to this earth, died on the cross, resurrected again, and let's hold on to our confidence that all that he said and done is true. Verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our witnesses. He knows us. He knows what we're going through. He knows when we're make, making mistakes. We have a great high priest that understands our weaknesses. Do you get it? He understands our weaknesses. He knows where you're weak. And that's why you need more of him. Because where you're weak, he is strong. And where he is strong, you have more boldness. Because he goes on, who can sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are. He was just like us, tempted as we are. Yet, without sin. Verse 16, then, because of all this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. 
Come boldly to the throne of grace. I believe when you come boldly to the throne of grace and you dip down into the waters of grace, you're going to be able to stand up and say, God's grace is sufficient. And now, because of that, I'm going to be able, not through my strength and power, but to speak the boldness of our Lord Jesus Christ to whosoever will listen, whosoever will come through the throne of grace, that, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You know, we're in times of need, and what people need to hear is more about the grace of God. Hebrews 10, 19. He goes on and tells us again, Therefore, as he sums up after everything he was saying about Christ's death and how his sanctification sanctifies us, and then he goes, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Christ, by a new and living way which we, he was consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. We, therefore, have greater boldness because he first he tore the veil in two from the top to the bottom. He went into the mercy seat with his precious blood, sprinkled it all over the mercy seat, and then turned back to us and says, come and follow me. You know, only the high priest could go in there once a year. Not no more. Everyone, everyone could enter into the, into the Holy of Holies. You say, I'm unworthy. I'm not worthy to go in there. God didn't say that. He didn't say that you need to be worthy. He said, you need to put on my grace. You need to put on my righteousness. You need to put on my mercy. You need to be covered with my precious blood. And when you have that, you can enter. You can enter into the Holy of Holies with boldness. Why? Because he entered into the Holy of Holies with boldness. Are you getting it yet? There's more. There's more to come. People say to me, well... Does God still do things today? Is God still pouring out things today? Yes, He is. Just keeping entering into the Holy of Holies and experience the full boldness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 6, where He says, For so we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So here, the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, that when we understand what Christ has done, when we understand the love of Christ, he says, so we may say. So we may say. Can you say that today? So we can, may, we can say. What can you say? What I can say, the Lord is my helper. I can say that with boldness. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I can say that with boldness. I will not fear. Enemy, give it your best shot, but it still isn't going to work. Because I have boldness in my helper, Jesus Christ. He helps me to overcome fear with faith. And then thirdly, what can man do to me is the question. Nothing. You say, well, they could kill you. They could put you in jail. They can do all kinds of things to you. Yeah, that might be true. And we're only here for a season anyway. I've already been so grateful to have 66 years with and being able to be here on the earth. And I will not regret. If I go home to be with the Lord today, it won't bother me one moment. And if some forcing me to go home to be with the Lord today, that won't bother me either. No matter what man can do to me, I still not need to fear because I have faith in our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my helper. And he has given me boldness. Well, our last scripture comes from 1 John four seventeen where he says to us, and this is right in the midst. Remember I told you the other one time when we were teaching, when you look at my Bible, you'll see all those pink areas. Though That is just underlining the word love in chapter 4. How many times it was used? Well, in that, in verse 17, in that section, in the midst of chapter 4, it says, love has been perfected among us. Love has been perfected among us. We need to have love for our brother. We need to have love for one another. He says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he was persecuted in this world, as he saw miracles in this world, as everything that Christ went through in this world, we will too. But what changes we can have boldness that when we stand before the judgment seat of the Lord, we have no fear. No fear. Why? Because we believe and trusted in what Jesus has said. And because we are his child, 
We do not need to fear. Why are we fearing man? Why are we fearing the things of this world? You know, people of this world may be able to judge us and say all kinds of things, but they need to realize there is one final judge and he has the final judgment. No matter what the world may do to persecute you, no matter what they take away from you or what they try to do to, to destroy you, that's their judgment for a season. It may seem to them that they're right, but the truth is the final judgment is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be bold and not in who we are, but are who in who you are. Thank you, O oh God, that you are wanting to bring us to a place not only to be bold, but to be full of boldness. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, today that everyone who hears my voice will say, count me in for more boldness. Count me in, O oh Lord. Fill me more with thy Holy Spirit. Count me in that I may stand on the street corners or stand on my job, wherever it may be, and I may shine forth the boldness and grace of you unto this lost world. No matter what it may happen to me, no matter what I may go through, Lord, I stand with you in boldness today, knowing that I know that you will take care of us and watch over us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And remember, the Lord thy God, he's the one who gives you boldness. And that boldness is going to give you the strength to move forward for his glory. Thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again, Lord willing. And keep on keeping on in Jesus. And let the Holy Spirit fill you with more boldness this day. Amen. Love you now. Bye-bye.